What's up guys, Gary with Self.Dev. We are back doing another LinkedIn assessment for you. Today we are doing the Adobe XD assessment. I've used Adobe XD for most of the time that I've worked in my current job because I usually get like an XD file from the designers. It's got the mock-up of the website and then I turn it into code. So hopefully we can pass this. Also, just to note, I have noticed that they do limit how many times you can actually take quizzes now. So like if we go to results here and then down here, retake, I have two attempts left with Bash. I have one attempt left with C Sharp and then one attempt left with C++, which I've only taken those once. So it, I guess it gives you different numbers of attempts depending on what language or what test you take. Because I've done Bash. I feel like I've done Bash at least twice. Uh, I've done Node once, and then I've only done C and C Sharp once as well. So I'm not sure why it's only saying one attempt left if I've only done that once. But just wanted to point that out for you guys. But before we get started, hit that like button. Make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one that comes out. And if you are an aspiring front-end developer, check out selftaught-dev.com for practice projects. All right, let's do this. Quizzes. Adobe XD. All right, let's go. So, what happens when you click the circle icon in the design preview? So, we've got Adobe XD here. What is that? Crash report. Don't send. Why did you crash? I'm taking a test. Come on. I need you to work now. Uh, let's just do like a web page. How many time? How much time do I have on this? A minute and nine seconds? All right, cool. We're good. Um, in the prototype, share. So, I don't have that button. So it's talking about in the online view. Um, the preview switches to the artboard. That sounds right, we're gonna go with that one. The preview switches to the artboard. What does, what does this circle icon indicate that you will be creating? A vertical, wait, horizontals that way, verticals up and down, right? Yeah, that's a vertical guide. Yeah, we're gonna go with vertical guide. Um, you were working on a project for an iOS device and you want a menu to slide from left to right. What animation should you select? I've never actually done the animations. I've just seen like my designers do it and then they're like, hey, this is what I want to happen on this web page. Mm, so, oh wait, this seems pretty obvious though. You're select, you are working on a project for an iOS device and you want the menu to slide from the right. So like, it's here and then it slides in. What animation should you select? So I'm gonna go with slide right, that sounds right. I feel like I need to check this. Where are animations in Adobe? How do I do animations? Let's see. Um, so we're gonna go to design. We're gonna make a little box here. We're gonna select it. There are animations over here. Component, repeat grid. We don't have anything about animations over here. And we're not super concerned about getting this right. So we're just gonna, this seems right. We're gonna go with that. What does clicking add-ons in the XD home screen provide access to? Add-ons for Adobe XD, duh. Adobe XD app extensions, but let's just check to make sure. So we click on add-ons down here. That's plugins. Are add-ons different than plugins? I'm gonna assume plugins and add-ons are interchangeable in this context. So, cause like why would you add on XD tutorials? It sounds kind of weird or UI kits. Uh, I'm gonna go with app extensions and assume that's the, they mean plugins by that. So next, what would you change to the text in the component? Wait. What would changing the text in the component affect? Only this instance. What does that green outline indicate? Dude, these are some Adobe XD features I've never used before. How do I even get that green outline on this? I feel like this is a trick question, because like, why would they ask? Like, ob it's pretty obvious that if you change the text, it's gonna change the text for at least this instance, but would it change it for all instances, all copies of that component in the XD document? What if we just do Adobe XD green outline on component and see what comes up here. Place component doesn't show green. How much time we got? 22 seconds. We might just have to go with the first one here. Yeah, we're going to go with that because the component and only the instance, those are pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to go with all copies of the component in the XD file. How can you swap one component for another that is already in a project? Right click the component you want to replace and select edit. Um, let's see, if, do I have to like make that a component? Oh, so the green line makes it a component. Oh, dang it, why didn't I do that earlier? Okay, and then we'll put this in here. Let's just some stuff. Let's put like some random stuff right there. And copy that, paste it here. Wait, no, cut that, paste it in there. What? 
put it in this component. There we go. And now we're gonna, actually we're gonna group that, then delete that one, copy and paste that. No? Yeah, there we go. So now those are both components, and if we change the text here, it only changes it in that component, so I was wrong on that other one. Um, and we want to swap one component for one that's already in the project. So if we right click on this component, we go down to, I don't see what it's saying here. Edit source, edit master and source document. I don't think this would work. This would like group that new component with the old component. I think it's this one. We have three seconds left. So D. All right. Your developer notifies you. I am the developer. Notifies you that the left alignment of some of the text in the, in a text in a slide in menu is off by two pixels. How did the developer catch this? Well, if you hold down left alt, you can like measure pixels between stuff. So I'm assuming he did that because that's what I do. So the artboard guides appear to appear in the developer's share screen. I don't use the share screen either. I use this one because like I don't think you can export the assets from the share screen. The distance views Values are shown on the developer share screen. The differing values were noted in the CSS. And there, I feel like there's a lot of stuff in Adobe XD we're not taking advantage of at my company that I need to learn about. The developer rolled out, rolled over them. Yes, that. Let's see. Adobe XD share screen. Can I just get some like images? Not videos, images. We got 14 seconds. Um, Okay, we're gonna go with this and just assume it shows you the pixels whenever you're doing that, so. All right, four more artboards for your current XD project have been created in Photoshop. How do you add them to your XD project? Import the PSD into the document. I don't know, can we, let's so if we go here, we go to, is there an import? We want to import, where do I have Photoshop stuff at? Pictures, I can't let you guys see this because there's stuff on here that you guys aren't allowed to see. So if we try this one, maybe. So hopefully this is something that can be in a video. Ah, it is. All right, cool. So that imported that one. Wow, it messes up the text. That's so eh, weird. So we can import it one by one for sure. Import the PSD document. So I don't think it's these two bottom ones. It's one of these two. I'm going to assume that Adobe is smart enough to allow you to import multiple PSD files or multiple sections. Like if you've got one PSD file and you've got like four pages in there, I'm assuming it lets you import all of them at once. So we're going to go with B. What does this wire attached to a component indicate? That clicking on this button will bring you somewhere else, so like an animation. Destination, I guess, actually. Or interaction. All three of these, actually. Or trigger. Actually, it could be all of these. All of the above. Trick question. But we're going to go with destination, because usually when I click on a button and I look at it, it's got an arrow and it goes to another page. So we're going to go with destination. Your developer has discovered that certain elements use the RGB color palette, whereas the project is supposed to use hex color palette. Why don't you just like swap that, dude? Like You can just go here. It's got the color. And hey, look, it's red. All right, we're using hex values. We want RGB values. All right, cool. We got the RGB values or the HSB values. I never use those, but you can swap that. Um, whereas the project is supposed to use the hex color palette, where can your developer easily change the color palette from RGB to hex? The XD document. You can easily change. This is kind of an objectable question because like if you can change it in the developer view, then which one, how do you define easily change? Because like, is it easier to change it in developer view or XD document? Kind of, that's kind of like opinion, I feel like. But I can change it in the XD document as you just saw and demonstrated. So if this question's wrong, this is an invalid question. Boom. All right. What do overlays require? An opacity. Otherwise, you can't see what's behind the overlay. An action, a key element, a trigger, a separate artboard. What? If I want to make an overlay, I'll just do like this here, and then we'll make this component like slightly gray, and then change the opacity a little bit so it's like that, right? Boom, we have like a dark overlay. 
on this element. What are you talking about in this question, man? Somebody who knows more about Adobe, Adobe XD, explain this in the comments to me. Do, okay, so what do overlays require? An action? Technically, everything requires an action, right? Like you have to perform an action. You have to move your mouse to do something on there. A keyboard element. No. Is this talking about like when you hover over something, when you hover over a box and the overlay just pops up? A trigger, a separate artboard. A separate artboard sounds right to me. These other ones just like are stupid. This whole test is stupid, honestly, but whatever. You guys watch these, so I'll do them for you. You have copied an interaction to a clipboard. How would you apply this interaction to multiple objects? I would shift click each object and paste the interaction. Cause you can shift click other stuff. Like I can grab that, I can shift click that. Well, I can shift click that and then I can shift click this component. And then if we have like five more of those, I can shift click all of these components and then I can paste, but it only pastes one, interesting. So I don't know if that would paste it to all of the objects. Select the artboards and paste the interaction. I should have got one of my designers to come over and like do this right next to me, just like I did with that MySQL assessment or the NoSQL assessment, I don't I forget which, some SQL assessment I did. Um, select each object and paste the interaction that seems like a lot of work. There's gotta be a way to like shift click and do multiple at one time. So we're just gonna go with this one. I hope this is zoomed in enough. I didn't think about that before I started this, dang it. All right, which export setting would you use to create a low res asset whose size is 50% of the asset on the screen? Um, designed at 1X because 2X is gonna be like higher res and then 3X is even higher res. Cause like, let's say we got some picture, let's say, let's say this black thing is a picture, right? We grab that, we go over here, we go to export, we go to selected, or we can just use the hotkeys, control E for export. And then you switch this to whatever you want, JPEG or PNG. I usually use PNG cause there's a lot of transparent backgrounds on the stuff we do. Um, or you can go to web and it will export the selected assets at one and two X. One is the smaller one, two is like full resolution or like higher resolution than one at least. Or we can do iOS and then we get one, two and three X. Boom, education. All right, which export setting would you use to create low res assets? We're gonna go with one. Designed for web doesn't make sense because if we click web, it automatically gives us one and two. So we don't, there's not like a designed for web option. Unless this quiz is, this test is just like out of date, but we're gonna go with the one X. You created a button and converted it to a component in order to make the button interactive. When you open the component area in the property inspector and click default state, you notice the button already has one state applied to it. What state's applied to it? Hover. I'm just kidding. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna just clear out all of this stuff. We're gonna grab a square and make this, and we're gonna round the corner so it looks like a little button. And then we're gonna right click, make component. And now this is a button. Can I, do I have to like declare that this is a button component or something like that? How much time we got left here? We gotta manage our time wisely, 49 seconds. Um, okay, so we can't, I don't think we can figure that out on our own. So let's do Adobe XD button default what is the word we're looking for? State. Hover state. So that's that's what I thought. It's the main component's default state. All right, cool. So we're gonna go with hover. Always trust your instincts, guys. You're usually right, unless you're not. You are previewing your XD file on an iPhone. How would you you how would you browse an artboard on the phone? I'm gonna go with long press and select artboard because use the drag gesture gesture to select artboard, like the drag gesture, that's usually reserved for like up and down scrolling. Does my hand get out of focus back here? Whoa, that's cool. I still need to figure out why my camera's lagging. Like if I do this really fast, or like even if I move around a lot, there's some like frame droppage in the thing. Anyway, back to this. So I have ADD, I get distracted easy. Um, but yeah, gestures or drag gestures are for scrolling. Double tap, that is usually to like select an image and copy it or something like that. And then long press, that usually brings up other options. So we're gonna go with that one. Cause I don't think Adobe XD would just, would like 
break best practices just for their iPhone app or something like that. So view results, did we pass? I was 1% off, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, 60, it shows what percentage you get now, dude. That's, I like that, I like that they've added that. So that's cool. You scored higher than 69% of the assessment takers. 69 is a good number. Um, but I was off, I'm off by 2%. I got one question off. That's really just depressing. Dang, I wonder which one it was. Can I see the questions I got wrong? I cannot, doesn't look like I can do that yet. This, like the assessment stuff is still in beta, so you might not even have assessments on your LinkedIn account, but to get to it, um, we failed, so we don't, like, there's no badge or anything like that, but if you go to view profile, speaking of which, if you wanna connect, just shoot me a message. I get, uh, don't, don't shoot me a message actually, I get way too many. Come in Discord, talk to me there. There's a link to the Discord in the description if you wanna come join that. But if you wanna come connect on LinkedIn, my LinkedIn is in the description. Anyway, to get to the assessments, go down to skills and endorsements, click on take skill quiz. Like I said, it might not be there because I think the assessments are still in beta. So it might not show up for you. But if this helped you out, give me a thumbs up. If you want me to check out your resume, I do front end developer or developer in general resume reviews. Feel free to email me your resume. It will most likely be in a resume review video if I choose to review it. I will block out any like personal information though. And like I said, if you need practice projects as an aspiring developer, check out selftaught-dev.com. I've got a lot of projects on there. I'll have both of those things linked up in the description, my email and that website. And then again, come join the Discord if you wanna come talk tech with me or some of the other guys in there. Got some great guys that know a lot of stuff. And I think that's about it. So I will see you next time. Peace.